Welcome to Beyond Business, the show where we look at the latest trends in the global economy. In this edition, we're asking whether national security is linked to a strong manufacturing sector. France has seen a steep drop in manufacturing jobs in the past decade, and there are warnings the damage is more than just economic. Some say it also undermines national security. It begs the question, do European countries in general, and France in particular, need to rethink their industrial policies? And if you link manufacturing to national security, what does it actually change? We'll delve deeper into those issues here in the studio in just a moment, but we'll set the scene with this report. No, no, no. It's become an all too familiar sight on French streets. Protests against industrial decline, factory closures, redundancies, restructuring and bankruptcies. 700,000 manufacturing jobs have disappeared in the last decade. The GFI, the Federation of French Industries, has released a report looking into the future of manufacturing. Various working groups looked at issues ranging from labour and environmental costs, cutting red tape, PR and innovation. The Federation's Director General says tax burdens, particularly the government's recent decision to create an environmental tax, threatens industrial growth. Changes are underway that harm French industry. Companies here will be less competitive while neighboring countries don't have the burdens we have. Our neighbors, our main partners worldwide, just don't have these constraints. We are shooting our industry in the foot once again. The Federation believes the current situation is extremely worrying. Research shows that when industry accounts for less than 10% of a country's GDP, the process of deindustrialization reaches a fatal level. Less than 15 years ago, manufacturing made up 20% of France's economy. That figure has dropped to 12% on a par with the United States. But a reindustrialization made in America drive is helping to create more jobs in manufacturing in the U.S. When considering the situation, what's dangerous is that, well, like in aviation, if a plane has a problem, you can sometimes use full throttle and get it back up, but sometimes it's too late. The French government has launched what it calls a responsibility pact, designed to prompt industrial growth by loosening labor restrictions. In return, businesses are expected to hire more. OK, joining us now for more is Jean-Francois Daguizon. He's a doctor in political science and he's a senior research fellow at the think tank FRS, an acronym that translates into the Foundation for Strategic Research here in France. Uh, thank you very much indeed for being with us. Uh, should we think of industrial policy and uh, manufacturing as a security issue? Is it a security issue? In fact, uh, if you look at the um, uh, na narrative of the French government, for example, you find many uh, references to uh, economic security. If you uh, read the White Book on Defense and Security, just uh, uh, published in 2013, you have some words on, about it. But in the reality, the, it's extremely difficult. It's difficult for two reasons. One is that during the traditional Gaullist era, um, the state, French government, French state, was uh, very uh, authoritarian. That is to say, imposing what they want to do to industry. And on the other side, there was a, an, uh, the civil industry, uh, globally speaking, who was doing what they want without any uh, real support of the state. So that two sides don't dialogue together. And it's very difficult to find the way of cooperation. Mm -hmm. uh, the French government is es essentially speak and spoke with uh, the French uh, technology company. But, but if you incorporate national security into industrial policy, what does it actually change? What choices change on behalf of the French government. What is interesting is the response of the French government through the Ministry of, uh, uh, la, um, of Mr. Mondebourg uh, Ministry. Into the Industrial Renewal Ministry. Industrial Renewal Ministry, that's right. It is, uh, uh, that could be considered as a, a resistance, for, uh, if you know what I mean, mm -hmm. a, a resistance ministry against uh, the rest of the world, uh, against globalization. Uh, 
buy French is a response. But uh, the response is not to buy French, it's to buy something to uh, somebody. Uh, and that's the problem. A and in my mind, the, 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 the question is to address the reality of the globalization. And by this way, uh, I'm a little bit afraid of that uh, the French government don't really have a dialogue with uh, the economic se sector. And the national security, which can be extremely be understood by uh, the economic sector, is ignored because people consider that something more important to do, that is to survive. All right, so Mr. Dagazon, stay right there, because we're going to turn now to the United States and to an initiative there to boost manufacturing. The lobby group Alliance for American Manufacturing makes the link between national security and industrial policy. Take a look. At Marlin Steel in Baltimore, the American flag is flown with pride. There is patriotism in producing and assembling products on U.S. soil. But away from the assembly lines, American manufacturing is also a political message. Take this video produced by the Alliance for American Manufacturing, a trade organization. America was built on the things Americans have built. Cars and guitars, ships and chips. Their headquarters are in downtown Washington, D.C., where politicians can be lobbied and decisions can be influenced. The president of this undertaking is Scott Paul, who proudly shows off a building made entirely in America, from the floor to the ceiling. Uh, we have a refrigerator from the state of Iowa uh, that was made with a lot of steel. We were able to furnish our, our patio uh, exclusively with uh, furniture from the state of North Carolina. Even the trinkets that we give away, uh, we make sure that they're sourced in the United States. Our coffee mugs, our keychains, uh, our t-shirts, and uh, virtually everything else. We felt very strongly that with public awareness about the importance of manufacturing to our economy, uh, and also with the right public policies, uh, that we could revitalize uh, the manufacturing sector in the United States. Self-reliance and homegrown jobs are key ingredients for improved national security as well, says the Alliance for American Manufacturing. We depend on domestic manufacturing to provide security for our nation from kitchen table to the battlefield. This organization's conclusion is that the country becomes safer with less dependence on manufacturing abroad and more products signed made in America. OK, we're back now in the studio with Jean-Francois Daguizon from FRS, or the Foundation for Strategic Research here in France. Uh, do, do you think that the United States is better at thinking of manufacturing as uh, national security or as a national security issue? And if so, why and how so? Yes, undoubtedly, uh, because uh, there is a tradition in United States uh, that finally... Um, United States exists through its own industry. And uh, it's a flag for United States uh, at the same level as uh, uh, armies, uh, armed force are. But isn't and the French manufacturing uh, industry a, a, a source of pride for France? It is a source of pride, but it's con it was considered from many years as a, something uh, obvious. That is to say, so France is selling uh, products outside and uh, there's no problem with that. But in the mind of uh, United States um, elites, uh, economy, industry is a battlefield. It's a battlefield where the, uh, the US company has to win to push, finally, uh, the, uh, the global uh, uh, sovereignty and capability and security of United States. Finally, to have the best product to sell outside reinforce the, the national security. So. But what should France then do to emulate the United States if indeed it wants to emulate the United States? I think that the last government tried to do so, uh, maybe not absolutely perfectly through the Mr. Montebourg initiative, but we are not uh, absolutely on the brink of a, a new um, vital challenge for the state and for the nation. And the difference is here. In France, it's one of... One problem uh, in the global, uh, uh, the huge, vast uh, problem uh, where France is, um, is involved now. In the United States, it's a priority. And that was the difference. Also, in the, in the discourse, the French discourse from the, the ministries, economy is a priority. But if you look at uh, the words, 
the, the question in France is not economy, it's not national security, it's employment. But if you have not a good economy, you cannot have employment. Let me just turn the coin for, for, for a moment. Isn't it a good thing, though, to have or to source uh, some of your manufacturing products from outside of the country? Doesn't that foster interdependence between nations, w w which is a good thing? Obviously, if everything is interdependent now, but you must have a good um, intelligence of what uh, you can sell or buy and what you could exchange or uh, cooperate with. And the difficulty now, if you look at the Mr. Montebourg initiative, it's they try to sell uh, an idea of France uh, like uh, a castle uh, circle by enemies. No, uh, we are in a globalization issue and we have to find the way of cooperation where you can sell, you can buy, and you find everywhere, everybody could find an interest. And the difficulty is to, to find the balance between both. But if you have nothing to sell with uh, some, uh, um, how to say that, uh, with uh, uh, very weak, technology policy, very uh, um, uh, very blocking uh, rules like the principle of precaution, for example, mm -hmm. which is extremely dangerous for the development of science and technology in France. Now, you, have, you could have main difficulty to be in the capability to, to maintain your position. All right, uh, Jean-Francois Daguizon, unfortunately, we have run out of time. Thank you very much indeed for speaking to us uh, this day. And with that, we're going to uh, wrap up this edition of Beyond Business. Thank you for watching.